Did you know that you can make a radiation detector with just dry ice and alcohol? There seems to be a craze in the cocktail world to make the most outlandish looking drinks. You've probably seen cocktails garnished with coloured sugar rims, exotic fruit, even UV lights. But the classic gimmick for visually appealing cocktails is of course dry ice. And as it turns out, all you need to make an early type of radiation detector called a cloud chamber is some high proof alcohol and dry ice. So I figured why not combine the two of them, make a unique cocktail with radiation trails shooting out from a piece of glazed uranium pottery. But don't worry, we'll keep the radiation isolated from the drink and the weak alpha particles that it's emitting won't even be able to penetrate the glass, let alone my hand. So it's perfectly safe as long as you don't drop it. So yesterday I bought 10 kilos of dry ice and I used some of it for my video about Martian rivers, but I still have about five kilos left and dry ice is quite expensive in the UK, so I figured I'd take the opportunity to make a cloud chamber, which is something I wanted to do for quite a long time. You can use a cloud chamber to visualize the radiation coming off of some of your radioactive samples. You can actually see the trails of the alpha particles and little swirls from beta particles, which is pretty cool. First, I should explain how a cloud chamber works. So the working principle is to create a super saturated layer of alcohol just above the base of the chamber cooled to sub-zero temperatures by the dry ice underneath. And this creates a very dense layer of alcohol that looks like a cloud, hence the name. And it can't condense into a liquid because it's so cold. And there's no nucleation sites for it to form droplets around. But when an energetically charged particle, like an alpha particle, shoots through the vapor, it ionizes the alcohol particles that it passes and causes them to be attracted inwards towards where the alpha particle went. So you end up with a trail of condensation where the alpha particle traveled, which is similar to the contrails that aeroplanes leave behind due to the particulates in their exhaust, causing a similar effect where the water vapor nucleates around them, creating larger droplets. And the cool thing is that even for such a simple system, you can actually identify different kinds of radiation by the trail they leave behind. For example, alpha particles produce thick straight lines that shoot out about a centimeter or two into the air while beta particle trails are thin and wispy and they often curve round. Cloud chambers are one of the earliest particle physics experiments invented over 100 years ago and they were actually used to prove the existence of antimatter in the form of positrons or anti-electrons and it was also used to discover other fundamental particles like muons which are basically a kind of heavy electron. So before we attempt to make our cloud chamber cocktail let's make a basic cloud chamber and verify that our setup actually works. I'll use this tall jar as the chamber as we need enough room for the temperature difference between the top and bottom. I've got this felt pad that I've soaked in ethanol and we'll glue that to the top of the chamber and maybe we'll heat it up a bit to accelerate the production of the vapour. And the vapour will fall down to the bottom of the chamber which has been cooled to around minus 50 degrees celsius by the dry ice surrounding it. So I placed the sealed jar in a bowl full of dry ice and waited for the effect to start. I waited 10 minutes, closely watching the jar, occasionally wondering if I saw a glimpse of a trail through the slightly fogged up jar, um, but no luck yet. I added some more dry ice to the base and went to do some more research, and it turns out that successfully forming a cloud chamber is not quite as simple as some of the videos make it seem. I mean, the theory is quite simple, but it's quite a delicate process. You have to make sure not to move the chamber at all and there's got to be no airflow so it's perfectly still so the vapour doesn't get moved around. Because the alcohol vapour does want to condense into a liquid so if it's not cold enough or if there's already some liquid on the base then it will actually just condense and won't form a nice thick layer of vapour. It's kind of like how you can super cool a bottle of water in a freezer that's below zero celsius without it freezing but as soon as you take it out of the freezer and jostle it about a bit or try to pour it it'll instantly just start freezing. So likewise, the cloud chamber is very sensitive to movement, so you've got to make sure not to disturb it, and it needs about 15 minutes at least to actually cool down to the right temperature, so you've got to be quite patient. And also the lid's got to be firmly on, and I think mine was actually letting some airflow in, so I put some tape around the edge of the jar. So there are a few videos online of people making cloud chambers, but they often don't show the setup, so it makes it look deceivingly simple. And the other thing I realised is you have to have a torch facing in the right direction to even actually see the trails and they only last for a second or two 
so you've got to be pretty on it to actually see them. So eventually, after another 20 minutes of keeping everything perfectly still, I started to definitely see trails puffing out around the Fiesta Wear piece. It was really cool to actually finally see it, uh, to actually see this 100-year-old technique in real life, and I managed to get some pretty cool close-up footage of it. It really gives you an idea of the invisible radiation shooting out of these samples that you don't really get from just a Geiger counter clicking away. To actually see them coming out all directions is pretty cool and see how far they travel before they're stopped. But as radiation detectors go, it's not very practical or quantitative, but there's not many detecting methods out there that you can actually see evidence of individual particles in real time. It's probably the closest you can get to actually being able to see radiation with the naked eye. So now it's time to try and recreate our cloud chamber inside a cocktail glass. And at this point I already had some doubts that it was going to work because of how delicate and precarious the supersaturated vapour is. So I plan on using this weird looking glass I found on Amazon. I think it's for serving caviar or something with ice in the bottom to keep it cool. So I'm going to put the drink in the conical part of the top and have the cloud chamber in the bottom. So keeping the radiation source completely separate from the drink. So I've cut out this ring of felt. I'm going to soak it in alcohol like before and sit it between the two parts of the glass. And we'll have the dry ice pellets sitting on the bottom of the glass. But as you can see, there's not really that much room. So we're not going to be able to fit that many pellets in. So that might be a limiting factor here. And we'll cover our dry ice with some aluminium foil and place our radioactive source on top of that. I placed the whole thing in a bowl with some more dry ice to try and help it along but even after 20 minutes I couldn't really see any of the signs of the trails that we were looking for. But now we know how delicate the cloud chamber is, I realised that even if we managed to get it working we can't really pick it up without just destroying the vapour layer. So the idea is maybe a bit dead in the water but we're going to push on. Maybe it should be more of a display piece in the centre of a table or something at a party. So for the cocktail I thought we'd keep it relatively simple but give it a bit of a nuclear feel with some blue curacao to give it a nice radioactive blue glow like the Cherenkov radiation you get when you start up a nuclear reactor. I know green's the stereotypical colour for radioactive things in media and stuff but I think the blue looks better, it makes the whole thing look quite cold. So with the curacao we've got some simple syrup, lemon juice and tonic and some vodka on a piece of dry ice to garnish it. I tried getting it to work for hours until I just run out of dry ice but I think it's just too small to function properly, it doesn't have enough room for the temperature gradient like we had before so the alcohol vapour at the top can actually condense, it's too close to the dry ice so it's too cold. Maybe we can try again with a different shaped container, uh, if you've got any ideas what might work better let me know in the comments. So unfortunately you won't be seeing a radiation detecting cocktail in the bar near you anytime soon but maybe that's for the best. And at least we managed to make a cloud chamber and get some cool footage of the alpha particles shooting out of my piece of uranium glazed pottery. And I hope you learned something about how to get a cloud chamber to work if you're having trouble or if you wanted to try it yourself. Because dry ice is quite expensive here and it only lasts like a day or two, I think in the future I might make a cloud chamber, a little electric one powered by some peltiers at the bottom that can cool it down. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed, uh, really helps the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.